are listening to the Kingdom Love Podcast from the L. message goes out to the people in Australia. My name is Christine Anderson. I'm a member of European Parliament and I'm answering your SOS call. I will do whatever I can to make it known to the world that your once free and liberal democracy has been transformed into a totalitarian regime which tramples on human rights, civil liberties and the rule of law. I'm imploring all of you around the world who still think your governments are looking out for your best interest. At no point in history have the people forcing others into compliance been the good guys. The welfare of humanity has always been the alibi of tyrants. Do you not realize that this vaccine does not protect you from COVID? It does, however, protect you from governmental oppression. For now, that is. But don't think for even a second that this is not going to change tomorrow. I'm a German and we once asked our grandparents how they could have just stood by in silence allowing a horrific totalitarian regime to come about. Anyone could have known. All they had to do was open their eyes and take a look. The vast majority chose not to. So, what will you tell your grandchildren? Will you tell them you didn't know? Will you tell them you were just following orders? You need to understand, it isn't about breaking the fourth wave. It is all about breaking people. Australia does not need a no-COVID strategy. What Australia needs is a no-oppression strategy. So I stand in support with your fight for freedom and democracy. We need to stop our governments from transforming our free and democratic societies into totalitarian regimes. We need to do it now. We need to stand up now. And hello out there in Clown World. It's episode 7, Small Town Underground. How is everybody doing out there? It is Friday, December the 10th. A little late getting in on the episode because I work for a living and just didn't have time. But I started preparing all of this stuff roughly on Monday. So it's Friday. May have a little bit of catching up to do. Uh, Might be a little bit Things might be just a tad bit dated, but we're going to get started here. What you just heard was Christine Anderson, a member of the European Parliament, and she sent out a video answering Australia's SOS. She says she will do whatever she can to stop the tyranny we're experiencing. And she is from, I believe, the European Parliament of the German uh, sect or whatever that is. Um, first time I heard that, I got chills, you know, Uh, if you look at Australia and you see what's going on there and they have had their gun rights or what, even if they ever had rights, their, uh, their guns were taken, their right to protect themselves were taken away with guns. And so now you see what's going on. Um, all these things we saw in the past or heard read in the past about FEMA camps and, um, 
all in the in, in taking people out of the population uh, unvaccinated and all this stuff well it's coming to pass in australia if you ask my opinion about it it seems that they're sort of a testing ground for some of this uh global agenda that they're trying to carry out and what better place to do it than the continent of australia new zealand way down away from everybody right which was uh if you go back in history and you look that was a colony of basically prison inmates that they just dumped off on the island so there's no telling what they have going on out there but uh always keeping track of that it's a it's a sad state of affairs that they're dealing with in australia um i've got another clip that i'm going to play this is probably going to be i'm going to try to have to edit or um try to go through this and get it right while i'm playing it but I thought this was very interesting, so I'm going to play it now. That's why in December of 2021, we are launching Reset Wars. Find out more information at ResetWars.com. Allow me a personal question. I I know that you don't particularly that you're not particularly fond of answering personal questions. But you and your wife, Dr. Tuachi, you, you play such a central role in the development of the virus, in the development of the virus, in the development of the virus. I have heard that you yourself have not taken the uh, the vaccine yet why not so i am i am uh, legally not allowed to take the vaccine at the moment we of course consider uh, to make that possible it is more important for us that our co-workers and partners uh, get vaccinated so we our goal is to produce more than 1.3 billion doses in in 2021 and, and that can only be done if we can really continue to work 24 7 without any interruption and we need to ensure that in, uh, that we protect the, the co-workers and our team members from from covid covid 19 infection because that would mean interruption and delay uh, and waste of vaccine doses and therefore we consider to make an extra batch uh, uh, independent from the from the european con contingent uh, available to, to to collaboration partners who are supporting us and to our team members but i understand why why are you not legally allowed to take the vaccine because you know that uh, that there is uh, there is a pri priority the vaccine is not allowed uh, uh, to, to, to 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 be taken outside of this priority list and what is also important we were so there's not the moderna ceo okay you just heard the moderna ceo saying that he did not have to take the vaccine and uh his name i'm pulling up is stefan bancel i guess he's been the moderna ceo since uh 2011 as chief executive officer member of moderna's board of directors since tw march 2011 and he before that served for five years as chief executive officer of the french diagnostics company bio mariux sa Hmm, I'm going to have to look into that. So <clears throat> I listened to that clip. I want to say it was Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday morning. I was listening to Senor Jones, and it was just kind of a snippet that they had played coming back in an intro. And at the time I was driving, so I couldn't see the video. So when I got to Red Line, I jotted it down on my paper real quick, and I thought, I'm going to go back and look this up and see if I can find it. I wasn't sure if it was an audio recording or a video recording, so I did about 45 minutes worth of hard searches on every available search platform and could not find that anywhere, no matter how hard I typed it in. So I ended up having to go back to the episode and keep uh, fast-forwarding till I found it, and I actually watched it, and it was a video recording of <clears throat> a reporter asking him these questions, and I'm pretty sure this is dated, I'm sure... It, but he did say 2021, so I'm not sure exactly when that clip was uh, made. But there's the there's where, there you have it. Rules for thee, but not for me, right? Um, and I shake. I just scratch my head because I'm thinking, okay. So 
So you are a CEO of a vaccine um, or a company that created a vaccine for all of the people, yet you are telling this reporter that you are uh, not permitted to take the vaccine, <laughs> basically because you need every single 1.3 billion shots to go out to your friends, family, and coworkers. Uh, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm the CEO of a company and they have something I need, I think I could score one or two for myself, if you know what I mean. That's just showing you the absurdity of what they are doing and how they are pushing the, these agendas onto the American people. <clears throat> and also, uh, let's not forget that our own government, uh, they are not mandated to take uh, a booster shot, a coof shot, a vaccine shot, if you will. They don't have to take it, but everybody else has to take it, right? Including New York, which now apparently I don't think you can walk out onto your front porch without taking one. So um, that's really all I'm going to say about that, because if I say anything else, of course, I'm going to get banned from uh, this channel. And just so you know, um, this channel is on Rumble. And I do my own recording and my own video with my own software. And when I upload these to other, um, well, when I upload them to Rumble, they're actually in Rumble, so they can't be taken away, right? YouTube, they can ban me all they want, but I have my own recordings. I don't use any of their stuff, so there's always recordings out there. So, so far, just to uh, update everybody, I am on YouTube uh, until the channel is disabled and like, who cares, right? I did a small town underground page on Facebook, and I'm I'm uh, putting episodes up. But if anything should happen, I always have a backup, which is Rumble. I'm also posting on Telegram. I'm trying to update my MeWe. If anybody's out there on MeWe, but MeWe is a little more difficult to uh, maneuver through. And then just got everything uh, back up and running on Parlor. So I'm going to try to upload all my episodes this weekend on Parlor, and I'm just going to keep on uh, focusing on getting this out there because I really don't care about making money or doing all that stuff. I actually kind of like doing it, and uh, I just feel like as long as there's decent platforms out there, I'm just going to keep uh, posting to wherever that I can and just get the word out, you know, because I'm just looking for people that are like-minded and that we can talk about things. And I, I want to be able to speak freely. And you really cannot speak freely on YouTube. It's a very tyrannical run company owned by Google and Alphabet. They're all in cahoots, Facebook, all this stuff. And um, just to be honest with you, uh, as the as this progresses and goes forward, uh, this metaverse crap and all these changes, uh, I'm not going to be plugging into that. Um, in fact, I'm I'm pretty limited on my... Social media, you know, there's all these uh, Snapchatties and, and TikToks and all that. I mean, TikTok's a Chinese-owned company, and they, they everybody knows they spy on you. I mean, what's not spying on you now? But really, uh, that doesn't even bother me. It's just the fact that uh, I, it's sensory overload with the social media app. So, But right now, I'm having fun. As long as I'm having fun, we'll keep this going. But So you heard two clips that I just played I thought were pretty important. <clears throat> the German SOS from Parliament to Australia and the Moderna CEO saying that he was not permitted to take his own product, right? But they want to make you take the product. So now i uh, bring up Parler just for a second. Why did I go on Parler again, right? Well, because I was, uh, if, you, if you're a fan of Mark Dice or pretty much it's, it's coming out everywhere now, but Mark Dice uh, set, had a video post up where uh, Melania Trump just joined Parler, and he thinks that there's a reason for that. Basically, because there th it's kind of a rumor at this moment, but everybody knows Trump tried to come out with Truth Social, I guess it was a month or two ago, and it failed miserably, right? Now, why did it fail miserably? A lot of people are like, well, they weren't ready, they... You know, things weren't where they needed to be. What I think that he was doing was sort of a test run to see what he was up against on the web, right? Because, I mean, uh, we're no dummies, right? Like, I know that my phone, I know that my phone glitches sometimes. I've already had to get another phone this year because I got glitched out when I got kicked off of the Facebooks and all these things and got shut out of everything. My phone went nuts, and uh, now I can see, like, these little 
glitches in my phone, like especially when I'm using apps sometimes, and sometimes my battery will just drain for no reason. And so obviously I'm probably on some watch list or somebody's taking an interest in, in uh, what I'm doing and they're watching everything that I do and what I'm into and all that, right? So I kind of think that Trump's first attempt at the social media, the truth social, was kind of a test run to see what he was up against. And so according to Mark Dice, he thinks that they're maybe in talks with Rumble and Parler to kind of buy Parler and use Rumble for the videos uh, side of this app, and they'll be coming up real soon. And I believe they have over a, a billion dollars worth of private um either individuals or groups that are trying to help fund it and get off the ground. So this is going to be a huge thing when they come out, not just because it's Donald Trump, but it really will. There are people like Parler and Rumble who are trying to keep things very free and open. And so I believe once we get this truth social, it really will take a big chunk out of the alphabet um, social media conglomerates, right? Because once you get to a place where nobody can control you like they have the power and control over the industry, you know, we'll be able to really uh, talk freely and, and build up communities there and people that have been long since banned will be able to come back. And I really believe that we can we can make um, a great community out of something like that. Right. I mean, I'm not trying to gripe, but YouTube is so stupidly easy to get on and to do and to navigate through and these other apps and and and. Companies just haven't been able to get there yet. And a lot of it is probably because they have a patent on just about everything they do. So they have this stranglehold over these apps. And then they can shadow ban them, you know? I mean, like, I'm a pretty decent techie guy with computers and stuff. I can figure things out. But it took me a little while to figure out how to get Parler back on my phone. Because they won't allow it on the app store. They have control over all of these things. So we've, we're trying to continue to break away. So... As soon as I can, we're going to get on to Parlor and get everything rolling so that by the time Truth Social does come out, I'll be able to expand the channel and hopefully leave YouTube and these other places, you know. Okay, so let's talk a little bit. Uh, first off, I'm not going to cover Jesse Smollett, right? I just want to bring this up real quick. Now, at, at the time I was d doing all this, um, you know, he's, he's since been found guilty, of course, on all five felony accounts. Uh, charges i mean is there is it any surprise it was a complete hoax we knew it was a hoax from the beginning right <clears throat> excuse me but my whole point to this is that as i'm trying to and i'm doing some digging trying to find out about uh the maxwell trial right um hold on one second excuse me i'm still doing this live it's hard for me to try to uh try to you know edit all this but anyway so jesse smollett right because lane maxwell so i'm trying and going through all of these things trying and trying and trying to find out more and more information i shared with you last episode who the prosecution is we know they're going to fumble this up we know that these huge corporations are involved there's big player names which i'm not going to mention here right now because i didn't be wasn't able to do the research that i wanted to do on it and and plus it's very hard to find out anything about the maxwell trial right now, Jesse Smollett, right? We know uh, from the absolute beginning of this thing that it was a complete hoax. It was a complete paid hoax that uh, he he did. He had these two uh, friends who he were sort of like bodyguards, friends, uh, gay lovers, whatever you want to call them. I don't know. Uh, according that's according to the media, right? And so they plotted to go out and like what is it, negative nineteen degrees. In the middle of Chicago, wearing MAGA hats and strangled him, put a noose around his neck, beat him up, all this stuff. And he was just going out for a subway, right? Oh, we know this was a hoax. We also know that I think it was the, the Cook County DA or something trying to drop the case. And then there was so much outrage that they, they ended up having to prosecute him, right? And it's been nearly, I think, three years since this case. Now, so I'm going through trying to research one of the biggest pedophile cases of our entire lifetime, right? So many people are tied up with this Epstein Maxwell case. And as I'm looking, I can't find anything. I mean, I am just throwing I am just throwing everything I got at it. I'm going to the band.video. I'm trying to find out and, and it's just 
crickets. It's crickets everywhere. The only occasion I see the story about, oh, Donald Trump was on his plane, you know. Donald Trump was on his plane. Then you read the article and it, you find out that some 14-year-old girl was introduced to Trump and that was pretty much the end of it, right? Nothing else but because if Trump was on the plane, you know, that's what you can find. But here is an article from the Daily Mail on the Jesse Smollett case, right? And the actual headline of this was, Jesse Smollett testifies attack was no hoax as actor reveals doing drugs and masturbating at bathhouse with one of the Nigerian brothers who beat him up. Claims he paid siblings $3,500 for health supplements, right? I mean, when I I saw that, that news article headline, I was like, okay, so here we have the biggest pedophile case in the world. Jeffrey Epstein, uh, I'm doing air quotes here, killed himself, right? And which you can't even talk about, right? And I can't find anything on this case of, of, of any real significance, right? But yet I know now, and I, what you see it, you can't unsee it, that Jesse Smollett was masturbating and doing drugs with his buddies in a, some kind of gay steamworks thing. I mean, this is insanity. What we're, what, what, ugh, like, it's, it's insane. I mean, really, it, that, that to me, and, and people are so stupid. I mean, I'm sorry. I used to think, well, like we all thought, like, right, if you're a politician or you're uh, an elected official, or you're a, uh, um, uh, a critical thinker, you go to college, you know, you're in a high um, uh, position job or an actor. I mean, I grew up thinking that these people were smart, you know, and they were had a lot of common sense. They were smarter than the rest of us. Uh, you know, they they had something that we didn't. And the older I get, the more I realize how smart I actually am and how dumb these idiots are, right? These people. It's crazy to me to think about. In this day and age, the clown world that we live in, that I can know that about about what Jesse Smollett did, uh, j- <sighs> the nasty stuff that he did in a hoax trial that's being plastered all over uh, every media outlet, but I can't find anything on the biggest pedophile case in the, in my lifetime. And then you turn around and the news reports on how Oh, these tinfoil hat people think that uh, this is a huge satanic conspiracy and uh, the pedophile rings, pedophile rings. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're not doing research on Maxwell, at least looking up and going to credible sources and seeing some of the corporations and names that are affiliated with these black books and all this stuff, right? I mean, you can call me crazy all you want to, but I'm not stupid, right? So... Uh, I did find one article here, and it doesn't really amount to a whole lot. The um, I just thought this was crazy. Maxwell, and I believe I'm trying. I gotta be careful here how I do this. Um, Maxwell. Oh, this was the um, the article about. This was the juiciest thing you could get. And when I say juicy, what I mean is like I'm not looking for this crap, right? I'm not looking for all of this uh, this junk. What I want is justice. What I want is um, for people to um, be outed. I want this these people to be taken down, right? So that's what I mean by that. But um, according to um, this re- most recent article that I found uh, yesterday, Maxwell 59 is on trial for allegedly recruiting and grooming four girls to be abused by her and Epstein from 1994 to 2004. Now, that in and of itself, right? So you're talking about all of the evidence that they've had on Jeffrey Epstein, uh, who tragically committed suicide in jail, right? And they are only prosecuting this woman for grooming four girls to be abused. Now, if you go back and you look at, you kind of do some deep digging, because no matter what the stupid headline of the article says, you got to read the articles. And so I read several articles and basically... The, they were omitting a lot of evidence uh, in this court case because prosecution and defense both say that they had no bearing on the case, right? Like, for example, uh, there was an article I read about Epst- they're going to the Epstein raid in like his eight-story or whatever it was, apartment house, and they found all kinds of hard drives, and they even found a whole drawer full of hard drives that had like FBI evidence tape all over it. Uh, one of the lawyers took a, a big suitcase full of pics and 
God knows, video. I mean, really, they took a lot of evidence and ended up sort of giving it back. But they they, they they have this information, right? And so we have this black book with all these names on it. The names don't mean much because all they are is names, right? Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm not stupid. So common sense, uh, the Epsteins were in all these circles. So a lot of people knew them, right? I'm not saying that every single person that had an interaction with them was a pedophile. But... um. Uh, if you know anything about the Lolita Express or, or or what, you know, this this guy was trying to set up a, an entire like he was setting up like his eggs to be like for reproduction. You know, like he wanted to create children in, uh, uh, in his bloodline and all this. I mean, this is some really crazy stuff, like Nazi type stuff, really, when you want to get down to it. I mean, this is some creepy, creepy stuff. But, you know, when you talk about somebody like Mr. Uh, G-A-T-E-S or, um, you know, the uh, C-L-I-N-T-O-N-S is uh, being on that plane that those many times. I mean, obviously, those people do, right? But the, the small of this is that their base is this. This woman is on trial for four counts of four girls to be abused. All right. And there's so much more here. So the trial is a farce from the get-go. This is literally the least amount that they could they could bring up to charge this woman with so that they can get this case over with. You understand what they're doing? They're trying to get this case over with. They know they have to charge this woman. They know that they can't let it this all go. So they're, they found the absolute least that they could possibly charge this woman so that they can get this case over with and then shut the door on all of the rest of it, right? Epstein's dead. They can just shut the door. They can just bury all this other stuff. No co companies, no corporations, no people are going to be held liable for this awful, awful, awful pedophile ring going on, right? And so I wanted to highlight that. So they're doing the absolute least amount <clears throat> that they can do in this case. And to and, and then everything else outside of the scope of these four girls, right? They're um, omitting. The, this is not. This has nothing to do with it. This is no bearing on this case. No bearing on this case. We'll never know. We will never. This will be the JFK of our life. We'll never know. And sadly enough, nobody's paying attention to it. I mean, we are. We're trying to pay attention to it. But I know some some pretty high pro profile people who, uh, you know, they can't find out a lot either. And so I'm hoping that some people do some some deep digging. Yet, you know, there was a Twitter account that was out last week, and they were basically it was an account devoted to. The whole Epstein trial, and it was devoted to just watching it every day and, and, and re just reporting on the case, just reporting what was going on and each day by day by day. And guess what? Twitter suspended the account. I mean, will you give me a break? They suspended the account. This is insane what we're living in, right? Okay, so Epstein 66 hanged himself in his Manhattan jail cell in August 2019 while awaiting trial on serious federal charges, right? Well, yeah, serious federal charges. And the the uh, article goes on to say the government could rest its case as early as Thursday if convicted Maxwell faces up to 35 years in prison. Yeah, right. Well, whatever. So... I know that Jesse Smollett likes to masturbate and do cocaine with his friends, but I can't find out anything on the biggest pedophile case of our life. So, <laughs> it's just crazy. I'm um, not going to cover this either, but uh, Hillary Clinton <laughs> reading her presidential speech. <laughs> if, you, if you don't already know about this, um, there are several videos out now that are highlighting this, but it, apparently she went through some sort of remembrance project thing or whatever where they she read her if she were president what her speech would have been and uh it's pretty laughable i mean these people are pretty damn laughable i just there's a lot of good videos out there if you want to watch it i watched a couple t uh, today as a matter of fact and i uh, got a good chuckle from that so thank god that um that never happened right of course now look where we're at <laughs> so um and I just wanted to, one more news thing I wanted to cover was the, uh, I do, I, I, li I look at Drudge Report quite often. Drudge Report used to be the best news uh, site ever um, for years and years and years. And now they're one of the worst uh, news sites ever. 
And when I say that, they, they've they always had a slant. They were way more conservative, and now it's just turned way liberal. There's a lot of rumors uh, about Matt Drudge, whether he even owns Drudge anymore or sold it off. Who who knows? I don't know. But I still look at it because it's very relevant. Because if you're going to be in the truth community and you're going to do these things, you have to pay attention to what uh, the enemy is doing and saying, right? Because it's just like the art of war, which I'm trying to start reading now, Um it, you you have to study the enemy. You have to study what is going on. You can't blindly follow you know follow along. Like I know a lot of people say that they don't watch the news, and which I don't really watch the news, but I always keep um, something that doesn't align with me in my life so that I can see. Because unless you're going to the Guardian or you're going to like Mother Jones and all this other stuff, you don't know what they're really saying. Oh, you're in an echo chamber of what is being told to you because conservative is just as slanted as uh, liberalism right now there's more truth there's way more truth on the conservative side liberalism is just bonkers clown world but the thing is is we have to understand what they're saying right we have to understand what they're trying to fight us with or we you know we'll miss something there you know because they their stupidity makes me smarter every single day right so, uh, Drudge Report just the other day, um, and these are just some of the headlines that they wrote. Uh, I didn't click on the stories, but they had a picture of uh, Mr. Former Vice President Joe Biden. Jobless claims lowest in half century. Biden delivering fastest recovery in history. Economy is a juggernaut now. Strongest I've ever seen. These are four stories right in a row of uh, former President Joe Biden single-handedly saving us uh, from a from a wrecked economy and then the fifth story right underneath it was inflation at 40 year high shocks americans spooks i mean <laughs> it's it's just like talking out of both sides of your mouth uh we all know um when the best economy happened right <laughs> we all know uh that we're that we, we're in the beginning stages here uh well we've been for some time but now it's it's more visible um I was reading an article earlier uh, this evening, just glancing through about Brian Williams. Uh, you know, he was the um, the nightly news anchor that um, basically said he was he lied on national TV and said he was in the chopper and they were sniper. They were taking sniper fire. It was this big, huge hoax. And then he got outed and all this stuff. And of course, he's still on TV. But one of the things that he said that um, struck me, right? Williams, final warning, America unrecognizable. And I'll read just a little bit of this before I move on to my other thoughts. But he's basically, uh, he's quitting TV. And <clears throat> long, I'll just read a little bit of it. This is from Real Clear Politics. Longtime NBC News broadcaster Brian Williams issued a strange warning Thursday as he retired from his 11 p.m. MSNBC show. And this is what's funny is they said he issued a strange warning. I mean, this is so stupid, right? Here it goes. The reality is, though, I will wake up tomorrow in the America of the year 2021, a nation unrecognizable to those who came before us and fought to protect it. Which is what you must do now, Williams said. They've decided to burn it all down with us inside. That should scare you to no end as much as it scares an aging volunteer fireman, right? And he went on to say, the truth is I'm not a liberal or a conservative. I'm an institutionalist. I believe in this place and in my love of my country. I yield to no one. But the darkness on the edge of town has spread to the main roads and highways and neighborhoods. It is now at the local bar and the bowling alley, the school board, and the grocery store, and it must be acknowledged and answered for. Um, I they just uh, said again, they've decided to burn it all down with us inside. Now, that that's true. And uh, so he's basically retired. Now, all jokes aside about Brian Williams, yeah, he was a liar uh, on national TV. Um, he was, we, he was supposed to be the voice of the news and he did, he lied about that story probably to gain uh credibility and all this stuff. Right. But, um, I'm not going to sit here and just completely jump all over him. Right. He's a human being and, uh, he's part of this system. So, uh, these people are the same as us all, but the things that he said in his, uh, parting statement, I feel like were things that he had kept, um, his mouth shut on for a long time. Right. I mean, he worked for MSNBC, uh, their main news shows like that with Brian Williams are a little more uh, mainstream, have you, or not as far-leaning either way. But those words he spoke could not be truer, right? 
And while we have our neighbors and our family and our friends who they have no idea what's going on. And you have somebody like Brian Williams who uh, has went through a quite a career. He's had quite a career on television and, and of course, uh, some blunders. <laughs> but for having somebody to stand up and say something like that, America is unrecognizable. Uh, and, and we cannot get people off of their asses to get anything done, um, including myself. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing this. What is this? This is just me talking in the thin air, you know, but I mean, I'm I'm trying to organize and do more things. Right. We, we You can't go 100 miles a day every single day. None of us can. But I, my point is, is that you have these national um, known voices out in the world that are literally telling you that America is crumbling and people just either don't care or they don't believe it, right? And it is frustrating. And, and I'm leading into what I'm getting into my, in the end. But it's very frustrating that that uh, people can't get this, and that we can't like the good. Where's the goodness at, right? Where where is that incentive to do good? Where is the incentive to uh, to stand up? I don't, I just don't know. I mean, I think the it's going to be bad for the vast majority when this thing really kicks in gear, you know. And we're talking about this could be in a few months. I mean, you look at the inflation, uh, the the rise in all the 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 shortage of fuel because now we're energy uh, dependent again. They're talking about coal, gas. You look at all these potential wars that are coming our way. You're looking at the Ukraine Russia situation, Taiwan, um, and China. You're looking at um, Iran and Israel. It is just, it's craziness all around. Now, this is more fear propaganda too, right? It's more fear porn to get out there to us. I'm not really worried about that. I can't control those things, right? All I can do is uh, control what is around me. But my point is, is you have somebody like Brian Williams up there telling you that things are pretty messed up. And yet we just continue on. And maybe that that's maybe that's what we have to do, right? But you still have to get prepared, people. You still have to do something. You have to wake up and realize, like, we need to be boycotting companies that come out with this stupid liberal garbage. You know, these these dumb people, these 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 uh, Seth Rogans with this these, you know, if you have an HBO Max, you need to cancel it. You need to not support that. We need to start sending more and more clear messages to these people that we're not going to buy their products. Right. We live in a capitalist society. I'm not ever going to own or buy another pair of Levi Strauss jeans again as long as I live, right? Uh, I mean, these are the kind of things we need to do. So one of the things I'm going to focus on coming up is devote an episode to companies that should be boycotted, right? That the more we know, the companies and the the products that people are trying to sell us that are not on our side, right? How do we How do we hurt them well we hurt them by not participating by not buying in their stuff right like it's going to come a time in facebook where we're not going to be able to participate now some people will move right into the metaverse right they'll continue on but there will be a time just like it is in, in all all everybody's life where they they just grow out of these things right like i'm not going to get on metaverse i'm not going to become glued into some stupid uh, uh fake world i mean i love playing video games and and i like that stuff i've actually uh, been in the virtual reality stuff uh i have a friend who's had it for years and it's amazing it's absolutely amazing what you can do with it it's a lot of cool things you can do with it but i'm not going to strap myself in like the freaking matrix in this world and uh, and participate in that so but that's where it's coming right my whole point every episode i say hey transhumanism transhumanism look it up see what this is all about see what they want to do the last episode, I covered things in the future. Now, Richard Kurtzwill, which I'm going to do a lot more research on, but Richard Kurtzwill is um, a futurist, is what they call him. And that doesn't mean that the predictions are going to be 100% right. But it, what it means is that I'm giving you a, a, a painting this picture of like, okay, yes, we're worried about all these things down here and we Jesse Smollett and this and that. But, but this is what the money's going to. This is what the future's going to. It's total totalitarian control, right? Uh, no more freedom. And we'll cover that in a minute. But uh, I'm going to move along real quick. Um, so uh, I've said all that and I want to go into uh, some Lynn Wood just a little bit. Well, not just Lynn Wood, but uh, somebody sent me this. 
Now, I want to make really clear about the last episode, and I don't think that I made it too clear, because sometimes, like right now, I'm in the beginning stages of this, and I go back and listen, and I'm trying to do it all in one take, right, because I don't have a lot of time, and what takes me so long is to find pictures and the articles and having to cut and paste and put them all together, because I want to not only put together a quality episode, but I don't want... Um, like I, I kind of do the steam and crowder thing. If I'm going to talk about something, I want you to be able to fact check it, right? I'm not just up here, you know, just talking about nothing. Like there's an article that I read this from. This is where this came from. This is what this means, right? And I'll probably have to do less of this in the future because I guess as the channel grows, um, there'll be more copyrights and, and, and any, the kind of things that I'm talking about and that we're listening to. They're looking for any excuse they can to, to ban us, right, to, to, to take me away. They've already done one community strike. And that was over, the funny thing about it was, is that was over some really serious election stuff. And it really didn't have that much to do with election fraud. What it had to do with was highlighting the, 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 the same narrative and the talking points that they had before that election, right? And they took that episode down and gave me a community strike and, uh, of course, I repealed appealed it, but I've not heard a thing back, and I won't because this channel will end up getting banned on YouTube. You can't talk about this stuff, and it's insane. And I, I'll be honest with you. I don't give a crap about their community uh, standards or community guidelines. I haven't read any of that stuff. Now that I'm a creator, they send me these emails. Hey, January, we're going to change this. We're going to make this. You know what? Piss on your rules. I really don't care. I'm not doing this to abide by your rules. Now, I mean, there's some stuff I will talk about, and I just don't care. I don't care about your rules, YouTube. You are failing. You are going to lose in this war no matter what. This is God's war. This is far bigger than your stupid uh, conglomerate company, you know. But uh, anyway, I'm getting off track here. So strategic this is from the Stu peter show strategic plot targets iconic lawyer communist style mockingbird media attack takes aim at lynn wood now i did not actually i didn't even know that there was a uh the video here because i was reading on the fly but we'll read a little bit of this article uh when kyle was first arrested prosecutors slapped him with an absurd two million dollar bail figure even though kyle had voluntarily surrendered to police blah 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 Despite an aggressive campaign to shut down the effort by GoFundMe and others, the two million was raised and Rittenhouse was bailed out. Now the trial is over. Rittenhouse never violated bail, so the money's being returned, but who gets the money, right? And it goes on to say Linwood was involved early on with Kyle Rittenhouse last fall. He says that he raised money through his Fight Back Foundation, so the money should be returned to Fight Back. And he has filed court paperwork demanding that and the Rittenhouse family says that the money ought to go to them and this has turned into a steady escalating war of words between the parties so anyway um there there's your other take on it like i what i mean by all this is that i didn't want anybody to get the impression that i don't like lynn wood or don't like Sidney powell or any of these other uh, people the mike flynn's and all that my whole point and i think i probably lost it a little bit Maybe I could have went back and edited it. Was that I'm trying not to highlight the actual feud as much. What I'm trying to highlight is the division, right? The absolute division that's going on in the conservative movement. Now, this division came from these personal people, right? The Lynn Wood and everything. <clears throat> and Fight Back and all, and Patrick Byrne. But this, the left loves this division. In fact, everybody loves this division, right? It's not us. I don't love the division. I'm just kind of highlighting it because I'm showing how fractured that we are on the uh, on the right, on the on the uh, conservative side of things, right? Now, I didn't really get that point across, but I'm not against any of those people. Uh, my thoughts and prayers go out to each and every one of them. I hope that they're not. Um, into anything illegal i hope that they really are trying to use the money for good and do all these things to fight the elections maybe one of these days they will make it up into the garland favorito tier where the people that are actually you know on the ground like filing real lawsuits instead of saying hey i didn't have nothing to do with this you know or whatever pointing fingers right but it's all about the division that we have and I want to try to cover both sides of this, the division, because there's a reason why 
that this division is so so big and it's sort of a justification for it all right <clears throat> so QAnon, Linwood, none of this, these things are bad, all right? But it's more of a highlight of conservative life, right? Like, let me give you an example. And I've said this uh, many times. Many people have heard me say this. If you are a progressive liberal, right, you, are, you follow talking points. Like you, um, the, okay, it's no secret, the LGBTQ communities stuff they ride off the back of civil rights, like African Americans, right? The civil rights. Now everybody knows African Americans were mistreated for for you know forever, right? Now um, everybody knows that there's been injustice. There's there's uh, there there are racists and bigots everywhere. We we know. I mean, this has happened in the past. You don't have to go too far back in the past to see uh, these injustices, right? And so as we progress as a society, multicultural society, um, my children, I grew up with my people grow up and, and they stop looking at skin color and they stop looking at and, and we all start start coming together. Right. We start focusing on knowledge, uh, knowledge and getting smarter and living better in a world that's not designed to be like that. Right. Because uh, racism is power. Right. And but the, the point I'm trying to make is that. A progressive liberal will just hit the talking points. They are told what to believe. They don't think for themselves, right? Um, you go to any liberal, left-leaning social media or just look at some of the stupid comments. I know stupid comments on both sides, right? There's some conservative people out there that, are, that just need to stop typing on their freaking keyboard. But the liberals far outweigh that. I mean, they're just... They don't even speak in uh, or type in reality. It's all false narrative. It's just talking points that they just uh, keep hammering and hammering, and hammering. Right? Because if you tell so, what is the old saying? If you tell a lie long enough, it becomes a truth. Right? So these people are um, supposed to be anti-government, yet they, uh, the vast majority of them, get everything from the government. Right? They want everything handed down to them. They have this entitlement about them. They feel like they should be recognized and that they don't have to change for society. Society should change around them. We should give up all of our things to to benefit those few, right? And so they're they're literally they're just going through the talking points, and they could care less uh, as long as they get what they want right now. But a conservative, anybody that that identifies conservatively, and I'm not talking about Republican Democrat, just. Blech, don't worry about that. I'm talking about people with morals and values and family. We are much more independent. We work for a living. Um, we work hard for everything we have. And we try to build good things with what we have, right? We, 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 we look around like, and we say, okay, we live in this free country and we have freedom of speech. And we have the right to bear arms and we, we have, we, we can do whatever we want, right? Um, as long, and we're law abiding. So it's within the law. So we, my point is liberals do not think for themselves. Conservatives and conservatives are far more independent and they think a lot for themselves, right? They don't like something. Hey, piss on it. I can stay here and I can do my thing, right? My, my, my thing. Now, I guess we might could learn a little from each other, but this is what the division, this is where the division comes from. Um, so many times, like I've said before, I see where um, there's a school bus, all right, that school bus, what color is a school bus? It's yellow, okay? On the liberal side, the liberal will try to convince you that the yellow school bus is really purple, okay? But on the conservative side, everybody knows that that school bus is yellow, okay? Here's the problem. Here's the division is that that school bus might be a shade of yellow that I see that my brother or sister has is seeing a shade of yellow. Okay, we're both seeing yellow, but one of them seeing a darker shade, one of them seeing a lighter shade. And rather than understand that we see, we see that it's yellow, but I see a darker shade, you see a lighter shade. That's where the di the the division comes from because we will just wash our hands of somebody. Like, oh no no no, oh no they they see it's yellow, but it's not. It's darker. It's darker yellow than they see. And we just kind of write people off, right? There's our division here. We 
we see something that we don't, that somebody doesn't agree with us a hundred, absolute hundred percent with, or they might say, I might say something here on this podcast that might piss you off, right? And being a conservative and not agreeing with me, right? You're ready to just turn this thing off, just hit the stop button. You're just going to go ahead and unsubscribe from me, and then you want to tell me what you really think about it because we don't see eye to eye on everything, right? Even though we know that that color is just the same, okay? But we're seeing it just a little bit different shade. This is the problem on our conservative side, right? We have so much division going on because we all see the same thing, but we just don't see it our way, right? So I bring that up, and, and it, it's, it's a fracturization of the base, okay? So we have a problem with that, right? Um, we have to come to some sort of like we have to come to some sort of understanding I'll give you an example and i'm not going to name any names but i was at a place one time where i'll give you an example about donald trump right now i want to go back just a little bit back in the people that have followed me for a long time they know what where my background is all right i'm a freak at heart liberal liberal person for years and years and years came to understand conservatism the only way and that like, having kids will do that to you as well but always been a hard worker always been into the freakier things in life but i've never given up on america right now i was at this thing one time and let's take donald trump for example oh before i say this i'm gonna go back to my point when in 2016 when donald trump ran for president which i was one of the first people that called donald trump uh early in before he ran for president when i just got a whiff that he was running for president and i had the same conversation with my father my dad was rooting for um i can't even remember who it was at the time now and i told him i said that's not gonna be oh it was uh, ted cruz i said cruz is not gonna be our president i said donald trump is gonna be our president what do you mean donald trump I said, let me tell you something, Dad. I said, Donald Trump's the biggest punk rocker there was on that stage. I said, and he's not a politician. I said, he will be the front runner of this presidential campaign. And sure enough, he was. Now, I'm not tooting my own horn and everything, but I've told you I've been in this a long, long time, and I can see things. And as soon as I heard Donald Trump's name of president, I thought, this is the guy, because he's not a politician, right? Now, I don't have to lie about anything. Did I think that uh, Donald Trump was going to beat Hillary Clinton? Absolutely not. I went to bed that night sick at my stomach knowing that Hillary Clinton was going to be the president that morning. I had absolutely. I mean, I, of course, I wanted Trump to be president. Uh, I've watched all three debates. I was with neighbors. We had there was a ton of energy around. But I did not. I can't. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I went to bed that night just knowing that my Trump was going to be president that morning because the cards were stacked against him. And if they'd had even an inkling, an inkling of of what was to come that night voting wise, they would have done the same thing in 16 or tr probably tried to that they did in 2020. All that being said, all right, I was at a place one time and not too long ago and there was supposed to be an open discussion right people were supposed to be able to speak freely and somebody spoke negatively of our lord and savior donald trump and uh all of a sudden the mood just completely changed with a few people and they just went off the deep end and got mad and left and um it was just like an eye opener for me i was like wait a second what what, what what what's going on here like we're supposed to be able to talk here it kind of reminded me a lot of what I see on the left. You know, they want to shut you down. And uh, it was just like I was kind of baffled. I was like, wait a second here. Wait a second. People, some people got the wrong idea going on here about Trump, right? And what happened was, is you know, Trump gave us a lot of hope. And he gave us four great years. All right. Four great years of just Americana, right? I mean, just pulling all this. And he did it. On, he did it on his own. He didn't have Republicans helping him. Who the hell was helping Donald Trump do anything, right? Covered that in the last episode. But my point to all this is, is Trump is not infallible, okay? Trump is not our Lord and Savior. Trump is not Jesus Christ superstar. He is a man. He is infallible. He is egotistical. Um, he, he, he loves his own rhetoric. 
All right. I don't bring this up in a negative light. What I'm saying is, is if you're in a situation where you can't even talk, if you if you know that school bus is yellow, but you can't talk about the different shades of yellow, then what are you even doing? Like, how can you li- how can you operate uh, next to people that you can't honestly listen to or at, le- at least let them speak? You God for God knows you might learn something, right? Donald Trump is not our savior. OK, um, God is in control here. And a lot of people might have a problem with this, too. But, you know, people think that the USA is God's land. We, we may not be a part of God's plan. I mean, you may need to stay at um stop for a minute and do some soul searching here i may not be part of god's plan you know nobody knows that and given the situation we're in now in america you know you really need to think about that uh there is no savior QAnon, all these people only thing that we can do is what we can do in this system okay i've said it so many times yes we're gonna um continue to uh work we're going to continue to activate to be activists we're going to continue to our fight against um the tyranny we're going to you know we got a lot of things coming up and and if you can't handle what's going on now well you might as well hang up your hat for what's coming and if you don't believe me why don't you listen to brian williams tell you that uh, uh, an anchor for so many years on the peacock uh, nbc and he's telling you that this America is unrecognizable. If you can't handle a little bit of disagreement now, imagine where you're going to be in a couple of years, okay? And so you have to look at uh, history to uh, see people. It's it's funny to me. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm going to go into this on another episode. I used to be an atheist, but I'm a God-fearing man, right? I haven't talked about God a lot, and I, I plan on devoting a whole episode to God soon, all right? But the thing is, is I've seen the light, right? I know that there is um, a higher power. Now, it, we may not, I'm not a Christian. Uh, I, I don't claim to be a Christian, right? Because I'm I'm a sinner. And uh, it doesn't mean that I don't follow with Christians, wouldn't stand up for Christians or anything like that. This is my personal thing. And I'm being personal with you here. It's not, not that I wouldn't want to be a Christian. There's just too many things in my head that's different, right? But I do know that there is a higher power, right? But only God knows what's going to happen and if anybody wants to go back in history and look um at at some of the things that have happened let's say nazi germany uh mao Zedong, stalin you know those people they weren't part of god's plan you know or maybe they were in that way and maybe that's going to be the same way with us i'm not saying it i'm just saying it you have to go back and you have to look at history and see what you're talking about. We all want hope and we all want a savior. We all want things to be better, okay? But sometimes I'm out here fighting and I'm like pumped up, right? And I want to go out and fight. And then I'll go at 11 o'clock at night to like the local gas station. And I just look around at people. And I'm not going to call any any of these people out, but I just look around and I'm kind of scared. I'm like, are these the people I'm fighting for, you know? anybody that will know what I'm saying if they've been to, you know, a gas station at 11 o'clock at night knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's um, people out there, man, they don't care. They, they're in their own little world. They all just want to stay high and drunk. They don't want to face reality. And and maybe, I mean, maybe that's, um, maybe that's the way it's going to be. But so we have all this division, in 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 this in in the conservative movement, right? Who cares about the liberals? The liberals are going to continue to push, 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 and when they push us in that corner, you know where are you going to be? But so I said all of that to say that it could be righteous indignation. I don't know. All right, but folks are upset, and I'll give you an example of Georgia. All right, now Donald Trump, your savior, is. Back in David Perdue. And if it wasn't already bad enough that Stacey Abrams is running for governor and that we have to deal with Brian Kemp, now he's going to throw David Perdue into the mix. And then David Perdue has all of a sudden come out with this uh, this lawsuit, right? The lawsuit about the uh, the ballots or whatever this and that the other. And I think we've covered this. Um, I said, I, I welcome it. I mean, how much more clown world can you get in Georgia, right? I welcome it. Go ahead, throw them in the ring, you know? Uh, it's no secret, everybody should know, that I'm a Candace Taylor supporter. Um, support Candace Taylor because she's not a part of 
any of this, you know, when <laughs> she's a good woman and, you know, Jesus, baby and guns, right? That, I mean, what more do you need? Um, and certainly our uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene needs all the help she can get outside of the, the Georgia cabal. But I said all that to say this, you know, we, Georgia is in a sad state of affairs and it's is it a seek is it any wonder atlanta one of the biggest greatest cities of the u.s and i say greatest compared to what they mean by great it's nothing near great to me but atlanta is the next huge metropolis civilization you know new york is bonkers uh, california is bonkers portland they're all a bunch of heroin addicts you know Texas is fractured, you know, Chicago, you want to go to Chicago, you get killed. You know what I'm saying? Atlanta is the hot, hot Atlanta, right? It's the next Hollywood. So it's no wonder that all this money and influence is pouring into this state. Now, we're up here in the cozy little 14th district where none of that stuff's going to matter too much to us, right? We're going to live the way we're going to live. We're going to get along no matter what color our skin is and all that stuff. But they want this state really bad. And if you think about it, think about it like the railroad. What is Atlanta? Atlanta's one of the mo- the busiest international airports uh, right there in Atlanta. It's almost like the railroad. They the the progressives need Atlanta like a big hub, you know, they, because they can work their way out their cancer up into the Tennessees and the Carolinas and Florida, and they can kind of take over the East Coast, sort of. So you will, you know, Atlanta, the big bastion, right? They that's where their their stronghold can be for liberalizing the South, right? So, it's is it any wonder that we're living in this clown world where we have all of these people running and uh, and 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 forget about this is my my final point coming up, but I don't give a sh- mm, I don't give a crap what you say about the division as far as like people running right at the end of this thing they're going to have a gop runoff and there's only going to be one front runner okay only one uh all of these people i welcome it run for governor run vernon jones run for governor you're certainly not going to get my vote but run for governor right uh but a lot of these this hyper uh you know stuff about oh god we're this you know we're fracturing let these people get out and vote. Let me get out and vote for who I want to vote for, okay? And the, let their let the best person. Well, we're not going to have the best person, but what I'm saying is, it's going to come down to one person. All right, that's going to run against Abrams. So we need uh, what we we need all this craziness going on because it's waking people up, right? It's getting people active. It's getting people out there. But calm down just a little bit, you know. Vote for who you want to vote for, but. We're upset. Everybody is mad and they're upset, right? And uh, you look up the five stages of death, right? You've got denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance, right? So people think, and some people might say, well, you you questioning why you should vote. Why why should I? Why, 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 why? why not? I question everything, right? It doesn't mean that I'm not going to vote. I made that very, very clear. I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote, and I'm going to get out there, and I'm going to tell people to vote. But I think that once the 2020 election happened, and especially in Georgia, the January runoff, right, we went through, we're going through these stages of death, right? The denial, anger, bargaining, and I think in depression and acceptance, that's the five stages. So I think we're right in the middle of bargaining and depression because ever, I'm getting super depressed about it because, you know, it, there's really nothing to look good forward to. What I mean by that is... I, and I know the GOP base, and they're all about unifying under Kemp, 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 Kemp. I get it. And I see these comments of these people who are like, we need to get past this election voting fraud. We need to get past this blah, blah, blah. We need to. No, we don't. And I'll explain what I mean by that. You have got to give people a chance to get over their frustration. I mean, we got our butts kicked in 2020 and we're getting stomped on every single day this frustration is not coming out of thin air we created this our constituents created this and we got on the train late right and donald and too many people were focused on donald trump being our big savior and all i wanted from people was to say hey I want Donald Trump to be elected one more time because that gives me four more years where I can continue to prepare, right? Because people miss the bigger picture. And all you people out there 
that want to get mad about somebody saying something about Donald Trump, this and that. The only thing that Donald Trump was, now I'm not going to say the only thing, but the major thing he was, was a barrier to, to give you more time to get prepared for what's coming. Because the reality is conservatism does not sell, okay? Progressivism sells. And it comes with all these... Uh, nice glittery, you know, uh, candy bars that hang from the ceiling fan that you're reaching. You know, it comes with all the the pizzazz, and and conservatism is boring, and we don't have enough um, culture in conservatism. Right? We we need more people of color. We need more people uh, from different cultures picking it up, and much more are than you'll ever know. But my point is is that. Conservatism is, you cannot have something as big as Atlanta and you cannot have politics as usual go on for this long without there being a major sea change. So I'm not saying that 2022 Stacey Abrams is going to become our governor. I'm not saying that you shouldn't vote for, uh, you know, Brian Kemp or Purdue or anything. What I'm saying is that the inevitability, all right, it's inevitable that sooner or later this is going to hit this state. If we didn't have Atlanta, Georgia, I would be I would never be saying this, but they are not going to give up Atlanta, Georgia. They will not do it. Now, we can talk all day long behind closed doors. Well, what can we do about that? Well, because we can't do nothing on social media about that. Um, but that's just simply the case. Now, it doesn't make me want to fight any less, and it shouldn't make you want to fight any less. But these people out there... Um, there is division all through our ranks, like from all the way up to Lynn Wood and, and Mike Flynn, all the way down to our counties. And there's it's it's there's a reason that it's there, you know, and it has to be there because people like me, I have to get this out of my system. OK, I c- cannot keep the 2020 stuff bottled up inside. Right. We have to talk about it. We have to ask these questions. We have to get involved. Because that's the only way forward, okay? So I'm not about to write anybody off. I'm not about to uh, to to tell anybody to shut up and just move on, right? Even I mean, in some aspects, we have to move on. But my point is, is that there's a reason that we're upset. We're going through the death of of our our way of life, and uh, and I'm not just talking about conservatives, but it's kind of the death of America. And it should strike you pretty obvious when you've got somebody like Brian Williams, of all people, saying that America's unrecognizable because it is. It is unrecognizable. And the future, the future doesn't look good to anybody. The only thing the future looks good to are these futurists who will have total control over our minds and total control over our bodies, right? And how we move and do things. Those are the people that are happy about the future. I just want to work and raise my children not to be idiots and not to be losers. And I mean, all we got is what we got here. So I have to ultimately trust that God has a plan. Now, the U.S. may not be in it. I may not be a part of that plan, but I know for myself that God's got a plan. And so I don't worry about it as much. But I'm while I'm here on this earth, I'm going to do what I can to fight against it, right? I'm going to do what I can to prepare. But I'm going to tell you, Georgia has a right to be upset. I mean, after all the crap we've been through, we have a right to be upset. You have a right to be upset with these people and to talk about it. And we have to get this stuff out of our system so we can move forward, right? Because the dust isn't settled yet. But Trump... Go ahead, throw another wrench into Georgia, you know. Go ahead and bring Purdue up because all it's going to do is just rattle more people, right? And we need we need people rattled. The same people, I mean, the same, when they talk about voting, for example, and I'm going over a little bit, I don't mean to go this long, but I went out and campaigned a lot on just voting. I'm pretty big on, like, not talking. I don't like to use my social media to just clobber people with, uh, my vote, because I've always thought my vote is sacred, right? We're getting to a point now where we have to take sides. Like, we have to come out, you know, and it's no secret. I love Candace Taylor. I think she'll be great at governor. She's got my support. But um, 
that doesn't mean I don't like the rest of them, you know. But the the point I'm trying to make is that, and I'm getting lost here, but it's just, think about it, folks. We need more. Oh, that was my whole point. Okay, so I spent a lot of time telling people to get out the vote, vote 2A, get out the vote, vote 2A, get out the vote. And I would go to a lot of circles with people and people that were interested in what we were doing and the movement and we would talk and then I'd show up to somebody's house and be like five, ten people there. And they'd all say, and you know how many people, oh, I don't vote or I can't vote. You know, I'm a felon. I, I, I don't vote. I stopped voting a long time ago. Or how many people after the election? No, I didn't get a chance to go vote. You know, this is the kind of crap that we need to get past, right? It's those same people. The people I know, they're going to go vote. They know I'm going to go vote. But if we don't get people out, so, you know, if we don't get people out there to go vote, and, and I'm not telling you who to vote for. I don't ever want to tell you who to vote for. I don't care. It's your that's your that's your God given right to vote, right? Now I'll tell you who I'm gonna vote for, but I'm not gonna tell you who to vote for. But you gotta get up and you gotta do it. You gotta get up and get active. You gotta get up and join something. You gotta get up and work with people. You gotta get up and try to fight for conservatism because this doesn't sell itself. We sell it, you know. You gotta get up and you gotta cross the aisle and you gotta you gotta talk to people and you can't be scared to talk about race and you can't be scared to talk about your culture and you can't be scared because your skin's white or your skin's black and all that. We have to push forward here, you know? And we have every right to be mad. So I have a feeling that the dust will settle soon enough and we'll be able to to get a front runner. And uh and Lord knows I I know I'm shooting myself in the foot by saying this, but we may end up having to hold our nose and vote, right? We may end up having to do that. And that's just a part of life, you know. But at the same time, don't give up on your grassroots candidates. Don't give up on these people that are out there trying. Because they're trying harder than I am, right? They got a lot more guts than I do to stand up and say, I'm going to run for this. Because I've told people several times, I'm not running for nothing, right? And uh, But that's just my cowardice, right? God bless them for uh, doing what they're doing, you know, shaking things up. And in a way, you know, Trump plays a lot of, what is that, 6D chess, 5D chess? Who knows? This could be a great chess move. I don't know. I know I don't really like Purdue, but I welcome it. Just bring it all in here and let's let's shake them up a little bit because at least now we're shaking up our base, right? Anyhow, I know I got to rambling a little bit. I have so much to say. It's been a busy, busy week. Um so I think I covered everything. So well, I want to say I'm getting a little bit uh, more and more comfortable. I'm really liking this. I'm liking it. So I hope you are too. Um, as always, um, you can right now, of course, find me on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. If you know somebody that is into this or might like it, you know, send it to them so they can subscribe to it so we can grow. We can meet and people. It's all about meeting people and communicating with people and, and hooking up with people. So if you don't like it, you know, send me a message. Tell me what you don't like about it, you know. Um, I mean, I'm having fun, and I'll try to do better. <laughs> but, uh, but I think what we're covering is fairly relevant, and I know that um, a lot of people out there have given me some very positive feedback and said they really enjoy the show, and they enjoy it. And I'm, I'm also finding out that uh, there's a lot of people out there that even though we might not necessarily agree or or a hundred percent people understand where we're coming from we're on a lot i've always said people are a lot more similar than you give them credit for when you're on the computer and you're on you read these stupid comments and god have mercy i go to these news channel comments and i see some of the stupidest stuff on the and and i man i tell you i pick up i pick up my phone and i just i start typing something and i'm like this is such an idiot and then i get down toward the end and i'm like no Number one, that's not going to make the slightest difference in the world. <laughs> All it's going to do is either piss them off or make them laugh at you. And secondly, that's the same person that you end up going to work with that, you know, you love them to death. They love you to death and you're there to do a job. You know, you might see things differently. It's just you can't. I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard not to knee jerk social media, but at the same time, man. That's not how, and we're a lot more similar in real life than you would believe, you know. So I try to keep that in my head as much as humanly possible. 
and I, I try to have a strict policy if I don't go over and piss on somebody else's bushes. All right, now if they come over and piss on my bushes, then I'm gonna unleash the dogs of you know fury on them. But I'll let you say your stuff because that's your right to say it, I and mean, I'm gonna say my stuff because that's my right to say it, and we can agree to disagree silently, right? But uh, anyway, guys and gals, I'm on YouTube. If you're liking it, hit the like button, subscribe to it, help me grow the channel. I'm also on Rumble. Um, under you can look up Small Town Underground on Rumble and find it. A Telegram, Small Town Underground. Um, me we i'm still under kingdom lum show until another month i think and then parlor is going to be under small town underground and i'm going to continue to uh, throw this stuff out there in other places so um everybody be safe out there and um make sure that you are using your right to protect yourself and just uh have a good evening and uh i'll see you next week